Okay, everyone. Now we are discussing the topic that is types of programming languages. Actually, there are so many programming languages, but there are some categories in which we can just divide them. So, if I talk about all the programming languages, so those languages can be divided into two categories. So, if we go with the diagram, we can see that here we are having the programming languages, and we can divide them into two categories. The first category we are having is the procedural language. Now, if we talk about the procedural language, then here we has to write the procedures. Procedure means there are some set of things that we has to write. There are very bulky programs. There is no relation with the real life concept. Only we are making the programs and we are working with them. So, real life concept is not available. So just like if I take the example of procedure language, so the best example is our C language. So the C programming language is the procedure language. Now we are having the second type of programming language that is named as object-oriented programming language. Many of the time we are having the short form of this one that is OOPS. So double O P that stands for object oriented programming language now this is very much popular because here we are not writing the big procedures and total we are dealing with the real life concept every programming language which is in the market today they are based upon the object oriented programming very first language which was the object oriented language or the oop that was the c++ that's why in the subjects we are having many of the times object oriented programming using c++ because c++ is the object oriented programming language and with the help of that we can work with the real life concept now what is that real life concept so to understand that first of all we should know what are the main features that make a language object oriented so there are four features which make any language a object oriented so if i talk about the first feature that is called the abstraction the meaning of abstraction is hiding some data we know that if you talk about the c language if I has to transfer the code to anybody else, then everything can be changed. Let's say I have made a big project in a C language. Now what I want that I want to give this project to my friend. So I should be giving the code to him. The friend can easily change the name on the title and can say that this is code developed by me. So that means I am sharing the complete code. So there is no hiding of data, every code we can see. That's why in the real life it is not practical. So that is the problem with the C. But if I talk with the C++, there are the concepts of public, protected, private. Means we can make things private. Private means only we can access. Protected means derived people can access. Public, everybody can access. So the, with the help of these things, we can make things hide. So let's say if I talk about an example, let us suppose that we are having a car. Now in this car, let's say we are having so many things. We are having the steering wheel, we are having the clutch pedal, or we are having the brakes which are available. Now whenever a customer purchase this car, he should be only aware about the main main controls. Let's say it is aware about how to work with the steering wheel, how to work with the brakes and what are the different different buttons over there. Now how many wires are present inside the car that is not aware means from where the petrol is going or from where this braking system will work. So that things is not required. So there is one example. If I take another example let's say we are having a facebook on this facebook we are having so many likes we are having so many friends now where is the code of facebook how many variables a facebook is using let's say my likes are going into variable a my pictures are going into variable b so that variables are hidden from the user 
so that is the concept called the abstraction so abstraction is the concept of hiding data that means we are going to give user only that information which is required we are not going to give all the information regarding the variables which are required right so variables will be hidden and only commands should be given to the user so this is the first real life concept that is called the abstraction which need to be there into the object oriented programming now we are talking about the second feature of object oriented programming that is called encapsulation encapsulation means wrapping up of data and functions inside a class so that is called the encapsulation if we talk about the c programming language we know that there we are having the data members like if we declare int a so there these are the data members like int a b c now we are having the different different functions as well just like we declare like void sum so these types of functions are also available inside the c but we declare them separately if we are combining them together and declare inside a class just like if i say that is a class a and we are just combining them together means wrapping up of data members which is int a and the functions like void sum together inside a class so they are grouped together inside a class so that is called the encapsulation what is the purpose of grouping together because we know that these are our own thing means how many variables we are using how many functions we are using if i simply write private before any of the class then this whole variable cannot be accessed outside that's why they are wrapped into the class so this is the feature called the encapsulation i can simply write a public also if i want that all should be available to the outside world so this feature is called the encapsulation now we are talking about the third feature of object oriented language which is called the inheritance so if we talk about the inheritance here we are going to inherit the property of parent let's say if we talk about any of the person that person is having the property of their parent just like maybe the nose is same the height is same or color is same so this way also this concept is taken into programming languages also now if i take some example let's say if i tell you to design a window maybe if i say window 12 now what you will do you will be making window 12 from the scratch it is a bad idea but what we should do we should take out the earlier window do the modifications then just give it to the customer so this is the modification we are doing on every step so this is a step of inheritance let's say we are going to design a window and here we put the clock now are we going to make the coding of clock every time no the coding of clock is already available so we should take that code and put into our new window that's it so means we are reusing reusability of the code concept is taken so let's say if we are having one program which we already have now this program all features if we are taking into another program so that is called the inheritance now that is the possibility that we are using let's say two programs now these two programs features we are combining to one that can also be the possibility let's say the coding of the clock we are taking and maybe the start menu coding we are taking and we are combining together so that is called the inheritance means reusability if we are having the code of something then we are reusing that code to design something new even if you are going to the companies company will not say to code from the scratch the codes are already present in that you has to do the modification and put into developing a software if you are starting from the scratch obviously that thing not to be done so this concept of reusability is called the inheritance now we are going towards the next feature of object oriented programming that is called the polymorphism 
so if we talk about the polymorphism as the name signify poly poly means one more means multiple phism means form if we are having one thing into multiple form so that is called the polymorphism now to understand this i am taking some example let us say that in your c we are going to make some function let's say the function of sum now you know that if i has to make this sum function of variable a and b so this is one function now can i make the function with the same name sum for a comma b comma c no that is not possible because same name is not allowed in the c programming we should be making sum one so let's assume if i has to make the same function for four variables a b c d then again i will take sum two so how many times i will take n number or let's see if i has to make the sum of four numbers should i remember that it is sum two or sum three or sum four so i should be knowing their names as well so this practice was there into the procedure languages like c but this practice is no more there into the object oriented programming because we cannot understand and even learn all these things so these things are not there what the object oriented programming says it says polymorphism same name into multiple form just like we are using the same name like sum for two variable or e1 the sum for let's say three variable or even we can use this sum for even four variables like a b c d or even we can use it for multiple variable but the name will be same because you can see that we will simply call the function sum 1 comma 2 it will call a first function if i say sum 1 comma 2 comma 3 it will call the second function if i simply say sum 1 2 3 4 it will call the fourth function so it is easy to understand this is called the polymorphism here sum is the poly means one word in multiple forms yeah there are some constraints also that means uh, the variable should be of different type or number should be different so that is a concept of polymorphism but yes these four features if a language is having that that language is called the object oriented programming language so these are the four features which is abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism that make a language object oriented just like c plus plus and if we quickly revise abstraction means data hiding encapsulation means wrapping up of data members and function inside a class and then inheritance means taking the parent property reusability concept and if you talk about polymorphism then one name multiple form so if four features are there then that is called the object oriented programming language like c plus plus now here in object oriented programming there are further two classifications the first classification we are having is the object based languages object based languages means they are not properly object oriented so they are based languages we know that there are four features which make a programming language object oriented but let's see out of these four features any one feature is missing we only have the three feature then this is called the object based because they want to be object oriented but they are not because of missing one feature so if any of the three features are available out of the four features then that language is called the object based object based means they are not completely object oriented just like if i take the example of such language then that language is vb vb stands for visual basic now this language is very ancient we used to have this languages and these are object based means they do not contain all the four features now there is one more classification of object oriented which is called the 
pure object oriented so pure object oriented language is one or more classification of object oriented now it is more than object oriented just like we know that the four features if they are there then it is called object oriented but these four features plus we are having everything into the classes means we are having the compulsorily everything should be into the class means class and object relation if we are having compulsorily fixed then it is called the pure object oriented language and just like if you take the example then we are having the dot net so here in the dot net we are having multiple languages just like we are having the c sharp or any other language so they belong to the category of pure object oriented language dot net is a framework which support many languages just like inside we are having vb dot net as a language c sharp dot net as a language or maybe we are having j sharp dot net or asp dot net so there are multiple language inside the dot net framework now if we completely see about the programming languages so this is the chart and we should understand one thing that all the programming languages whatever we are studying they fall under any of this category if we quickly revise this concept then all the programming languages which we are having are divided into two categories like procedural and object oriented in the procedural we are going to write a big procedure we are going to do the step by step policy there is no real life concept no hiding of data nothing so just like we are having the example which is the c language and if you talk about the object oriented programming language here we are having the four features which is the abstraction encapsulation inheritance and polymorphism and these features support to make a language object oriented just like we are having the c++ now here this object oriented language deal with the real life concept all data hiding reusability single thing into many form everything is available now out of these four features if one feature is missing then it is called the object based language just like we are having the vb which is the visual basic and if we add the concept of classes into the four features means everything should be into the class and we has to work on the object then such languages are called pure object oriented language just like we are having c sharp dot net so this way we are having all the programming languages and this is the types of programming languages